Hello everybody, welcome back to Circuit Simon Says. Um, I'm taking today as a good opportunity to review my club car, my slotted Jaguar XJR10. So um, I've been racing this car at the club for a few months now. Um, so when I show you it, um, bear in mind um, it has been beaten up on. So why am I reviewing it? Well. This is the closest that I've got on this car to its stock since purchasing it. Normally, I run this car with a couple of extra magnets. And while I was at the shop a few weeks ago, um, it was suggested that I try flattening the chassis. So, one thing to know about these cars is the slotted cars, these chassis are so thin they can come with either twisted or warped or bent out of the packet. So I took my original chassis and I um, warmed it up on my 3D printer bed and I think I overdid it a bit. So I have the original racing chassis here and as you can see, um, you know, it's meant to be straight and I overheated it. Um, you can also see some of my magnet placements and, and such there. But yeah, the slotted cars, the chassis are thin. They don't come straight often out of the box. And this is one of my pet peeves, I guess, with these hobby grade cars. We're now being sold chassis flatteners. When you know, these things should be coming straight out of the box so anyway i had to go at flattening this one and um, i overdid it and melted it and had to buy a new one so i'm since i'm starting over from scratch um great opportunity to put some laps on it with the stock downforce um and the chassis so i have flattened this chassis i did it with water and magnets and encourage a little bit of bending as well um, I think I have it pretty flat now so there we go so the good thing with the slotted cars is that some of them and this one did came with two wings it came with this wing which is the display wing which is kind of you can run it with this it's you know two-part plastic um, you know, I'd say it's still fairly brittle feeling. And if you have a hard crash, it will crack. But this would put the wing in a more upright position. Um, and true to the original car. Uh, it also comes with this other wing, which is a softer plastic and a lot more flexible. And therefore a lot more suitable for the rigours of track racing, um, this car has seen a fair amount of racing action. Um, this wing here comes by default as black plastic, just base color, um, plastic color, just like the chassis here. Um, I took a rattle can and uh, masked it off and um, spray painted it up. And a good friend of mine at the shop, he managed to find some Castrol stickers because the best I could do was uh, Philips 66 stickers. and. He didn't like that. He said I needed the cash roll ones, so he went and found me some cash roll ones. So brilliant guy, and um, yeah, he sorted me out with that. So as you can see, though, these slotted cars have excellent printing on the body. Um, you know, the colours on this are brilliant. It's got a nicely detailed interior. A lot of the additional parts are flexible. Um, it did have a wing mirror here. Um, that became a victim of the track. The other one's still on. Um, the vent. I, uh, the clips broke on this vent um, the other day. So uh, there's a little plastic vent that clips in there. Um, I've got it somewhere. I might have to glue that back in. Um, but hey, it's, the car's lighter without it. Um, you can see, you know, I have dinged it up a bit. But... Overall, you know, the quality of the paint and the finish on the body is really good. Now, these um, side cowlings for the wheels, 
I've had to um, glue these in place. I don't really have to run them in the shop. I said I don't have to, but I think the car looks more correct with it because that's how these cars ran. So, you know, there we go. So how does this compare to a Carrera? So let me bring my Carrera in. But I wanted to mention also that these cars, they come with a clip here for the um, slotted digital chip. There's a slotted chip and you can just direct plug and play and get these to work on a Carrera digital track, which is great. I love the inclusion of a flexible wing. You know, I do wish Carrera would do something like this, provide a nice display ring uh, wing and then a flexible one or just make the ones that they have come on there flexible. Um, you know, here's the, yeah, my sad attempt. It's uh, yeah, a little sore point. <laughs> you know, is what it is. So let's have a look. Here you can see, you know, the moulding of the Carrera car and the body of the Carrera car is just that much heavier. Um, as far as wheelbase goes, you know, the, 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 this Jaguar XJ10 is actually quite a long car. The wheelbase is almost identical um, between the two. And front of the guide to the wheels... The Jaguar, I don't know if you can see that, but the Jaguar may be just a fraction longer in terms of guide to rear wheels. The Jaguar is quite a long car. I do have other slot -its. Let me get you. I've got a Porsche 962 right here, 962C. Um, that I've been running at the track without a magnet. I'll probably do a review on this down the road. But this other slot, it has a much shorter wheelbase and it's a much shorter car, so it's probably lighter. Might actually go quicker at the track, I don't know. But um, this is the one that I'm uh, gluing stuff to, so I like it. So, this was my first entry into or back into slot cars really um, you know I like this car a lot um, it's the first car I bought specifically for the shop um, yeah and I really like it so let me pull the shell off and I'll talk about this car versus a Carrera car all right so I've got the body off so let's talk about the body the body is a lot thinner than a Carrera car. Um, the interior for this Group C, it doesn't need a big interior, which is good. So, um, you know, small, lightweight interior, and uh, like I said, replaceable wing, and the wing is actually wrapped around the body post, which, uh, rather than just pushed in, which it has its pros and cons. Um, on my Porsche 962, I've snapped one of the uh, race wings off so I've had to glue that back together but um, at least they give you the race wing and a display wing so you can still have a nice looking car on the shelf when even after repairing the race wing so yeah a lighter weight body but the printing on it and the painting on this is great and so are the colors you'll have to forgive the colors on the race wing like I said I painted that so I did my best to match it I'm close. It just needs to be a bit more emerald, but um, it's close enough that when you're looking at it racing around the track, you don't notice. Anyway, so the chassis. Um, these slot cars, these slotted cars are $70 versus the equivalent Carrera analog cars, which are $44. So what are you getting? Well, this chassis you get, it's thin. Um, and like I say, they often need flattening. So that, uh, that's the downside of these thin, um, or flexible chassis. Um, little pet peeve of mine that they don't come flat given the price point. Um, they are a two-part chassis. So, you know, they don't come with lights. They don't come with a chip. They don't come with a digital chip. These are more expensive than the Carrera digital cars. So 
yeah, what are we getting for our money? Um, you know, the guide setup is very basic on these. There's no center mounting, um, self-centering spring on there. You know, it keeps the weight down. It's a club race car after all. The um, chassis comes with some height adjustment. Um, you get grub screws underneath to raise and lower the front axle height in contact with the track so you know i've got mine so that we're just rolling there like that um and i've got a little play but that's all right that's what i want um you get this two-part chassis pod assembly this allows for when the wheels are rolling over the track the unevenness of the track not all the force is immediately transferred and all all the momentum is immediate not all immediately transferred to the body therefore throwing the whole car around um it only moves the uh, pod around as a as opposed to the whole vehicle so there's some gains to be had had with some float you can also with this somewhat adjust the ride height as you can sink the pod deeper into the body now these slot its um you know they come with these aluminium wheels on the rear plastic on the front they actually do have some good wheel inserts um you know they are like individually spoked wheel inserts i'll try and get it to focus but um great looking wheels um the rear ones are hidden on the jag and I lost one of them at the circuit. But being turned aluminium wheels as opposed to plastic molded wheels, um, these often come with flashing and molding on them. And sometimes they're not perfectly straight or round. Whereas these aluminium wheels are turned round and are perfectly round out the box. So when you put on a good quality tire um, and the slotted tires are of good quality they fit on there and they are pretty much round out the box and they don't need an awful lot of uh, truing to get them nice and flat and round to give a good contact area <clears throat> the slotted axles also tend to all come out straight where I've, some of my Carrera cars the axles aren't straight so you've got a little bit of wobble in the axle but these um Slotted axles and the running gear it seems to be manufactured to a slightly higher standard. And I just wish that they had their um, their chassis fit and alignment, you know, equally matched. So there we go. So the slotted axles are straight. Um, they still run on brass bush bearings. Um, but there's very very little play in this axle versus and you're not going to see it but the correct well maybe the carrera axles in their bearings tend to have a lot more float and play than the machine bearings of the slotted so you've got that little bit of extra precision and a little bit more assembly with the the pods and the grub screws for axle adjustment and you've got higher quality wheels and the motor on this one is a 23k um, rpm motor with a brass pinion and brass fittings for the crown so you're getting you know you, you, you probably got a fair price for it in comparison with the Carrera with the lights um, there you go so I'll quickly put this on the mag and I'll do a quick lap with it and then bring it back to the table all right so the BMW 119 grams which is pretty consistent for that car here is the slotted Jaguar. It's a lot lighter car. And, you know, that's in line with the other poly car that I've tested so far. About 48 to 50 grams of downforce. So 
significantly less magnet downforce in stock. Um, at the club we run at 100 grams, so I'll be definitely adding more magnet to this later on today um, to bring this up to the 100 grams. Otherwise, I'm just not going to keep up. Let's uh, put some laps on the track. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've only just put this car back together and um, yeah, this car is riding on the track a bit, so you might hear that. So with the magnet, this car is very sharp, even though it's only got 50 grams of downforce. You can run this in stock, and I think it's the quickest car right now on this track with the stock downforce. And yes, you've still got to slow down for the corners. Yeah. And with this chassis, I had to straighten that out as well. And I'm still rubbing a little bit. And I think that's because the Carrera guide stands a little bit proud of the track. My other slot, it's the Porsche 962, runs a little higher. And I'm not getting the rubbing on the track for that. So, yeah. But this is my race car, this is the one that I put the rubbing on. Uh, this will be the one that I keep as my race car. I'll just have to get it to the shop and do some work with it and get it running right on the shop track. It doesn't have to be perfect on this one. I've just got to try and get it going well there. But with 50 grams of magnet, it sticks as well as the um, fastest Carrera I have, which is the Porsche, which nearly has 70 grams of magnetic downforce. Okay, let's bring it back to the table. So I got a 5.509, but I still have my old times in here with the full downforce on so if we remember 5.5 i'm going to have to reset my track records and set another one um, for my reviewed cars and i need to get rid of that record well cancel that was my neighbor so let me do this and I don't need that record there for my reviewed this is my neighbor but um, with the race setup I ended up with a 5.50 so that would make this car the fastest on this leaderboard so when I get this uh, corrected the um, Jaguar will be well, hopefully I can reset that on the top um, with significantly less downforce. The, uh, as you can see, the Porsche is running 138 grams. So this is running less than half the downforce on this car. So these uh, slotted cars are really, really fast. Um, and they're good looking. And... When I had the old chassis running on with the 100 grams of downforce, I was uh, setting a 5.1 second lap. I hadn't quite broken five. So in race trim, um, yeah, this was a very, very fast car. So hoping to get back there when I add the magnets later on. But yes, I just wanted to show you, you know, the slot it. And, um, you know, they do the excellent replacement wing or the race wing the more flexible race wing i love that about these cars um the little bit extra that you've got to put in with the chassis you get those actually flat from the box uh, that's my dislike 
Uh, yeah, overall though, I mean, love racing this car in the shop. I'm still not the fastest driver, um, but the car is quite capable. Um, drivers at the shop who are more consistent than me can set a very fast competitive time and one day I hope to get there. So thank you for joining me this morning and um, I appreciate your time, but that's my slot it Jaguar XJR10. Thank you very much and uh, everybody have a good week. Bye.